G'day guys, Martha back there in my shed, I'm BC. Today we'll do a little bit more on grinding cutters, specifically on the old Wong Fu machine. Uh, one thing I want to show you is how I'm dressing the wheel now, it's a little bit different. I've gone away from the Norton High Performance wheel, not that I don't like it, I think it's bloody wonderful but it's expensive. And I've gone back to one of their standard wheels, which I used a fair bit last weekend. Now it's time to dress it. It's got the black marks all over it from being used and I want to give it a two facet dress so there's less of the grinding wheel in contact with the workpiece. Uh, I'm going to be trying to zoom in on this with the new camcorder. It seems to not only have good audio but uh, the colours in the lower light environment here is just fantastic so I'm quite pleased with what I've got with it. Uh, I've got a few cutters to grind. If I get time I'll have a go at regrinding that tap for the mid torch repair and uh, bring you along for the job. So I'll move the camera around and try and zoom in a little bit closer and show what I'm going to do. Okay, you're up a little bit closer onto the wheel now. I'm glad that the camera can pick up from a fair distance away. I don't want to throw too much shite down on the lens. Uh, this is the standard factory dressing on the Norton wheel. You can see it's a couple of thou um, out of Concentricity, I haven't dressed it yet, it's a new wheel. But there's about a 30 degree chamfer on the inside of the wheel and about 4mm to 5mm contacting on the outside. So I'll dress this area with a diamond first and then I'll come back with a DS1 dressing stick and just lightly dress inside the cup of the wheel. I find that with a small contact area of about 2.5mm the grinding is a lot freer uh, list the material out very, very quickly. I'm very pleased with the results there. So I'll mount the diamond up and bring you back in for a look then. Well, you just missed me leaving a great big poop in my pants. I fit the wheel a bit too hard. But we'll take a few now off. It's pressing up reasonably well. I'm only taking in about a hundred to a mill or two hundred to a mill at a time. I'll take a small amount off. This setup isn't too rigid, so it gets a lot of vibration in the camera. This is not where you want cable six foot. A little bit coming off. And as you follow the change in the colour of the wheel, you can see where you're fresh and where you're up to. There's still about two and a half mil on the OD of the wheel that hasn't pressed up yet. Quite surprised at how rounded over the edge is. But it's not a very fine grip wheel, so it is hard to maintain a good profile. Now it's a little bit more to go. Uh, getting closer now. Okay, to get to this stage, we've we'll come in about almost 0.2 millimetre, so 6 to 8 now with the old speed, and we've re established a reasonably flat surface. That's what I was after. So now, what I'll do is re establish the chamfer inside the wheel to give it a much thinner contact. Here. This is the old DS1 dressing stick. And whenever you dress, always keep the dressing stick in a lagging position, otherwise you'll get stuck on the wheel. Now 
And for God's sake, have some specs on. This throws a lot of crap out. That should be good enough. Okay, I'll turn the machine off. Now this is very, very basic, it's not really addressing 101, but I'm back to about a 4mm wide contact area there, and that means there'll be a lot less chatter and a lot less pickup on the wheel. Okay, I'm going to cut her up, we can come back when it's time to grind. As I say on TV, this is a simulated demonstration. I've gone around a couple of times already, I've set the table depth stop, so it'll only go as fast to the left as necessary to grind a clearance behind the foot and essentially cutting fairly freely, so I'll wind it in another 600. Now I hope you can pick that up on the audio, it's got a nice crisp sound, when it gets uh, dull or glazed over it gives a real, real horrible bloody noise but at the moment it's grinding nice and crisp and they're giving a good finish. So I'll take a little bit more off that then I'll roll her over and do the outer facet on the two, so back in a minute. Okay, I'm grinding the outside edge now. You can't get much of a view there, but I think you can see it when I grind in. I have noticed that there's a chip out of one of the pieces I'm taking a little bit more than I expected. But once again, it's still sounding crisp. So if I wind it in a little bit. So it's not going to take much to get this cut off back into action. This is always a bit of a balancing act between camera and what you have to do with the car. Okay, we'll bring it back when there's a bit of action with the tap. Bye for now. G'day guys, back again. I'm dipping the cutters in SMT Rotorex. Well, at least that's the name on the box. I don't know where I got it from or exactly how much it costs, but it's a waxy solution. And I think I bought 20 kilos because that was what the box was all about. And I've got enough there for about another 10 years worth of tool grinding. But at least when they clatter around in the box on the way home, they won't be getting damaged. It's about time I threw another bar in the pot. It was quite an easy process. So I'm glad all that's over. That took me a few hours to do. And I've got to say that the newer Norton grinding wheels are really up to it. They make the cheaper crap I bought many years ago look like exactly what they are. Uh, much higher wheel wear, I will say that. And when you dress it, you lose quite a bit of material. But all in all, it's the old adage, you get exactly what you pay for. You pay for a better grinding wheel. That's what you get. Now, I've had a bit of a bite at the Norton High Performance Wheel, and I'm very impressed, um, not just with the rate of metal removal, but the small amount of heat inputted into the part and that to me is fairly important so I might invest in a few more new wheels I wouldn't mind having a go at a CBN wheel when I can find one that doesn't want me to sell my kidneys to buy it but all around I've got to say that the better quality aluminium oxide wheel um, cuts a hell of a lot freer it must be a much more open bond And the high performance wheel is exactly that, high performance. You'd expect to get what you pay for. Well, this wasn't a bad job. A few more like this and I won't have to mow lawns on the weekend. 
Okay, that's all for now. That's the end of the box. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, let's hope we can get onto the tap later on today, but I think it's getting a bit late. I've got some invoicing to do. Okay, thanks a lot. See you later. Hello everybody, I'm back again. This is the next job I'm moving on to. It's a 12mm by 1 tap uh, that I wish to use for a MIG torch repair down on the brass base. Borrowed it from Nathan Kay and one of his mates decided he needed a thread all the way to the end of the hole so he grabbed it like an end cutting slot drill or end mill. You can see that there's relief behind the cutting edge but most importantly he's taken all the chamfer off the bloody thing and taps only cut on the chamfer. So if you put that down to the guts of a hole, it would act like a slot drill, bore the hole out a little bit bigger than what you had the threading size at, and you'd finish up with a very, very small amount of uh, thread content. So what I'll be doing is hollow grinding that centre out of it to make sure I do have the ability to go down as deep as I can, and then I will chamfer grind uh, about one and a half to two threads of lead onto it with the uh, four lobe cam and the form relief grinder. I don't know I'll get uh, into it that far today but this is the next job up. Um, fundamentals of taps, they don't cut up the flute, they cut purely on the chamfer. They can size at times a little bit on the body and they are relief ground behind the flute but only marginally, like you've got to have a microscope the size of a fairy's fart to see it. As a matter of fact, if you grind in the flute, you usually only change the tap one tolerance letter or number, I can't remember, but it equates to about a tenth of a thou. It's very, very little coming out of the tap. The only real exception are spiral point and spiral flute taps, um, which do sort of cut with the flute instead of the chamfer, but no, I will say that they work like normal taps. It's only the uh, threads at the end that do the cutting, those that have a, a chamfer on them. So when you regrind taps, uh, so far my experience has been regrinding the chamfer, usually two way longer chamfer. You can shorten the tap up if you have to, that works quite well. And with spiral flute taps I have ground up inside the flute there. With the tap on an angle I have that in a previous video and it works that well that uh, the fellow hasn't come back for any more grinding they've outlived the factory grind probably 20 to 1 but fair go there the sales rep did give him the wrong RPM figure only about twice of what they should have run at. Uh, I will try to get on to gun nose taps later on because modifying standard taps to gun nose taps can be handy although they're not equivalent, the hand taps have much deeper flutes. Gun taps are the strongest flute by far because they don't have to have full space, they push all the crap ahead of the, the nose of the tap. Okay, we'll get this set up. Um, I don't know what wheel I'll use. I'm reluctant to break down this setup because I've got the table well and truly uh, perpendicular to the spindle and I'd like to leave it that way if I could because I've got all the Dominic's cutters to do at a later point in time. But I'll see if I can find some setup to use a uh, straight cup wheel or this flared cup wheel just to grind the end off that tap. So when I can, I'll bring you back then. And uh, by the way, there's two uh, zooms on this camera, which I just found out by accident. One is your normal telephoto, but then I've got a manual adjust focus on the front lens. And that's now about oh, 30 centimetres from the tap. And I think it's bringing up a pretty good picture. And, for the low light, I'm very happy with the resolution. So I may be able to get some much better action shots than what I have been able to so far. But I'm not going to do too much until I can get a clear cover for the lens to stop all the grinding shite getting in there. Okay guys, back soon if I can get it going. Okay, cheers and a fair noise, but what happened on this thing won't work. Let's see if we can run a little bit off this tap. I'll just take it in and out of time. Having a 
small grinder like this is very handy for the little job. And despite its very small footprint, it is fairly adaptable for a lot of jobs. Okay, there's the first part of the process done. I've got rid of all of the work on the end and I've also taken away the clearance that they had ground behind the cutting edge. It serves no purpose, this isn't a slot drill or end mill. And I've just been informed by my office lady I'm running out of time. So the actual grinding of the tap will have to be next week. I plan on using the form relief grinder if I can scratch up a four flute cam and I'm pretty sure I have one then I'll be get on with that job. Thanks a lot for coming along with today I hope it was a little bit of interest and we're starting to prove up those grinding wheels and the different method of dressing it's things I should know but I suppose not coming out of this trade I'm a little bit behind the eight ball. Okay bye for now like and subscribe thank you.